we know that solid principles are actually a default concept we must have clear. But we believe that we can handle it so easy until someone asks us in an interview why solid principles are important. So let's see a quick and simple explanation as we like in this channel. Me and again. Today I'm going to talk about solid principles using simple examples to explain each one. So let's get started with the what. What are solid principles? SOLID is an acronym that stands for five key design principles. Single responsibility principle, open close principle, least cost substitution principle, interface segregation, and dependency inversion principle, which are used on object-oriented software development. About the when, SOLID principles were developed by Robert C. Martin in 2000 essay called Design Principles and Design Partners. Then, the acronym was coined later by Michael Feeders. Talking about the why, following these principles is not a cure of all and won't avoid design issues, but if we follow it correctly, they will lead to better code for reability maintainability, design patterns, and disability. So now having the origin clear, let's try to understand each principle. The first is single responsibility principle, which is about one class should have one and only one responsibility. So if you put more than one functionality in one class, and in the future you will need to add or change some methods, it will require another run or testing to avoid any surprise in production environment. We must have a design that is easy to change, to extend and accommodate new functionalities and ensure this principle is respected. For this example, we have an interface called vehicle with a method calculate velocity, which is implemented into the classes car and motorcycle. The method located on every vehicle type has the single responsibility of calculating the velocity according to the type. The next one is the open close principle. It's about software entities, classes, modules, functions should be open for extension but closed for modification. That's why I'm using this image. We see a house here and the possibilities for extension behind. Open close principle helps you write code that is extensible and cleaner. And talking about the example, we are using the interface called vehicle again, but in this case with an abstract method called draw, which will be override on the other classes, car and motorcycle. And the main classes invokes the method draw with the parameter vehicle. So in the future, if we need to add a new vehicle type, we will not need to change the main method, just extend the interface into the new type. The next principle is list scope substitution. In order to follow this principle, we need to make sure that the subtypes respect the parent classes. In simple words, the rebuild class objects should complement no substitute based class behaviors. You might be wondering why I'm using these bold images about dogs, but I will explain this concept using a very well known example. Here we have a real dog that says quack. And here also have a rubber duckling that needs battery to say swag. Apparently both are ducks, but here's a huge difference between them when the rubber duckling has no batteries. In this case, the behavior of it could be different. This could be different if we extend the dog on a female dog because she will say squawk too, even without batteries, yes? We also have this example here with the classes rectangle and square that implements the interface for sided figure. Both have four sides and the only behavior could change is the way that we use to assign the weight and the height values. The principle is interface segregation. The interface segregation principle states that no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use. The principle is very similar to high cohesion principle of GRASP. So in simple words, you must not define methods that do not apply for the classes that implements the interface. 
To explain this, we have an interface called product, which has the most important attributes that any product could have. And this is implemented by the class disk, but if we need to add another kind of product, like a movie, we realize that we need a new attribute to save the age. But we can add this property to product cause not all the products we use this property. That's why I created the new interface called HAware and from the product type movie disk I can implement both interfaces. That's interface segregation because each interface has a single responsibility and both are only implemented in the classes that will use the entire methods that they have. And the last principle is dependency inversion. It states that the high-level models should not depend on low-level models, but should depend on abstractions. And abstractions should not depend on details. Details should depend on abstractions. Yes, it's a kind of weird, but it states that the behavior of our class must be defined by an external interface or framework that helps us with the control inversion. It helps to increase the modularity of the program and make it extensible. In this case, the high-level module should not depend on low-level module for abstraction and the inversion of control provides us abstraction. And to do that, we must invert the control so the low-level module will not control the interface and creation of the object. For our last example, first we have a shopping basket and it has two methods, shopping basket and buy. And for implement dependency inversion, we will have two interfaces for persistence and for payment method. So we will have different payment methods and we can save our data on different kinds of databases. So we defined the method save into the interface persistence and we implemented it into the classes server and SQL database which in this case will be the different kind of persistence we will use. And about the payment methods we defined the method pay and implemented into the classes credit card and PayPal and from the main method defined into shopping basket we're gonna receive the interfaces parameter instead and a specific payment method or persistence type. So this is all for this video. I will leave the code explained here on the GitHub link on the description box. Thank you for watching my video. You know this is a kind of learning law for me. So we will learn together.